Hello and welcome back to the channel, I hope this video finds you well. Today's video is going to be part 2 of the underrated card series and as I'm sure you can see by the thumbnail we're going to be focusing on Trump. Now Trump is a bird horn, it deals 120% more damage when chained with another Trump card and as you can see from the base stats you can already see it's got a solid 120 damage. Now. As you can imagine, if you combine this with the 20% extra damage, you can catch a lot of opponents off guard. Now comparing it across to the other horns, the main one for birds really is this eggshell. And this is so strong because you can sacrifice your bird in matchups where another one of your axes might be better. Now this is very helpful against plants and reptiles where birds tend to not have enough damage to get through. Or even just for some general manipulation, when an opponent's at two energy and can't get a kill, you can play an eggshell, keep the health up on one of your midline or even your tank, and for other situations where you might need it just to get yourself back in the game. Just to make a tricky outplay when you haven't got much health left in your tank and the opponent tries to get away playing cheap and just plays that one card, eggshell can be a great move. The other horn which is quite popular on birds is this Kestrel here. 130 damage and disables target's horn card until the next round. Now generally with birds this isn't as strong as it can be on other classes as you can't often survive a blow from the opponent and then benefit from this disable. It's more so an earlier game move where you've got this disable, you might be able to knock off their backdoor move in the case of a wing horn or turn off their highest shield move if it was a teal shell or a Babylonia. That's really where the Kestrel shines when played on a bird. But for me it's more of a, a reptile or a dusk move. It works very well on disabler saws or just another general sort of Kestrel, green thorns, chomp type of build. But the one thing you'll notice when comparing across these moves, one thing that you might have noticed is that Trump has 30 shield whereas its closest counterparts have zero each. And when I show you this build that I use you might start to realize why I do up for this Trump because this shield when paired with a move like Balloon uh, can be very strong because you are able to survive as you're, you're not normally able to with a bird into the next round and you can continue dealing this massive damage. Now of course the build I'm talking about is the hair bird. This was featured in the previous underrated cards video uh, with the Balloon and hopefully I can show you again why this is a strong card, especially when paired with the Trump. Now with the hair, we don't really need an eggshell because we've got enough damage to help us through these reptiles and plants, especially when paired with the Trump to deal outsized damage for the amount of energy we have with this chain. Now hopefully in these few games that we're going to go over, you'll be able to see why this is a strong build. And the build of course I'm talking about is this hair bird with the balloon. Works surprisingly well with the Trump because uh, balloon does have that 40 damage on there. Uh, so with this overall build, being fairly aggressive you can catch opponents off especially when they're using aquas uh, it's accompanied here in the middle by a rice risky fish and goldfish aqua uh, again looking to have as much damage as possible while still retaining some control with the rice uh, paired with the goldfish this can be a handy little move set uh, to keep the opponent to three energy and then survive and speed up or just negate any slows coming through. Uh, rounded off by our standard energy tank up top. Got the watering can to help against double aqua as that is going to be a tough matchup for this. With the shield rounded out by a Hatsune uh, which is this tail move here. 80 shield and it also disables the attacker's range moves so we can outplay yams and watering cans more effectively. And then we have the leaf bug series. So leaf bug because you always want to have a zero cost energy gain move. Here we don't have any others so that's going to be our main source of energy gain. And then we've also got the seal with the serious. So paired with the rice we have two steals so we have some solid control on this build so it's not just about going very aggressive. Often we'll actually play quite passively in the early game with this build. Into the first game here against uh, a fairly standard sort of tri spikes mid beast build. Normally they run a rimp for a bit of energy gain to help them out with the, the tri spikes. That's one place a rimp can be pretty good. Uh, but here they have a tri spikes axi with tiny dino. Uh, now this is fairly recent after the MMR reset so some players haven't quite calibrated yet. Uh, not the usual quality of team you'd see up at the top ranks but if the player's up here they must be a solid player so we're not going to underestimate them here. Um, we've got a fairly aggressive hand starting out. We can go with this trump and the rice and the, the trump as well uh, to try and get some chip damage off. However as it is the tri spikes build I'm a bit wary that if they do pass and we leave them on 4 energy that this tank's going to be useless. Uh, but relying on the steel here and then playing some of the cards uh, to get, let us get away with that. Another thing to say is that because they have this Dino Dino uh, they can't really go with an, an effective tri spikes until uh, round 5 unless they draw their Serastis and that means that they're probably quite likely to come through this beast here on our tank 
and save the tri spikes for the mid game. So they played two energy there with a carrot and a serious. They got energy back from both, but we did get a steal on top as well. Uh, so that's going to put them at four energy going into this next round. Uh, now that is very worrying here um, because we aren't able to cover the tri spikes effectively. They could have the beast coming through. Uh, so we're going to take the risk and go with this leaf book at soon, expecting beast cards. Um, fortunately, they did go with the beast cards there. I don't think it's enough to keep us alive. It's going to be 172 coming through. Yep, so we are dead, but at least got some value uh, with the leaf bug cartoon coming out of the tank. Might as well get that value there. Of course, we would have preferred to survive, but that's one thing. Those small margins can win you games if you are able to survive. Now into the next round. Um, they play three of their energy, so they're going to be at three again. And we're just going to play around the tank here. If they put up some shield with a carrot, uh, this trump and balloon are going to be enough to get the kill. If they put up a pumpkin or, or higher shield, then the follow-up trump should be enough to get the kill on the tank. And unfortunately, they've gone with two rice and they've stolen both of our spare energy. Uh, now that's very unfortunate because we couldn't really outplay that effectively, although we knew it was something that could come through. So well played from the opponent, it was well timed serious. Um, and we haven't really got a good option here. I'm going to go with this balloon pop anyway, because not really expecting beast cards, probably some reptile moves. Um, and then I'm going to hold on to our offense and just try and go with bird cards in the following round. Okay, so they spent four energy of what would have been five there, uh, which means they've still got three coming through, uh, or potentially coming through next round. Um, so I expect they'll look to try and defend their reptile here. Uh, so we could save energy, but we're going to go with everything, just try and get the kill. Um, they went with beast cards instead. Okay, this is interesting. So the opponent's gone very aggressive, and with a double balloon draw, uh, we can actually get the kill using our chumps and peacemakers, assuming we survive. And we should survive here without a crit. Perfect. And there again goes to show that having that 30 shield over a move like um, Kestrel or uh, an eggshell there, it was very helpful. Now, we're in that spot where we can play the trump and the peacemaker. They're going to be at 160 apiece and then two balloons. And I think balloon against the beast is 55 damage and that's a lot for a zero cost. So you might be able to get the kill here. I think worst case, they, they will um, last stand and then we'll end up drawing. Okay, let's see how much damage is coming through. 53, 53, and we just eke out the kill. So that was a very tight game. Uh, you saw there was not a lot that went our way there. Uh, with the steal back from the opponent round one, then the well-timed double steal catching us off guard. But we did manage to triumph with that high amount of shield, that turn there. Without the 30 shield coming from our trump, we would not have survived. Okay, so into the next game here. Um, against a very interesting team. We've got a shrimp and then an Indian star Nemo backliner. So they have two sources of energy gain, which is generally a bit over the top, uh, but it's gonna be a pain in the ass for us here, because uh, we really don't want this shrimp to come through onto our bird, uh, as our midliner here is all melee, and that will not do very well against this Indian star, which I guess is the thinking of this build, because they can knock off birds with the shrimp, and if they're facing terminators or something like that, then they can brick wall or at least uh, survive to the 1v1 and make use of this Indian star. Uh, but we are gonna go aggressive with a double steal, for that exact reason we mentioned where we don't want this shrimp coming through onto our bird. And we know the best way to negate that is to steal their energy back so that they can't even afford to go for it. Now we know in this position their highest damage combo is going to be a shrimp and then two Arandas. So if they did draw that, they would have just enough to get the kill. Uh, however, we are more worried about a Yam coming through from the opponent. So we've played our, our Hatsune Sirius here to, again, try and limit their energy, but also to hope that we can disable their Yam and then next round play a Brick Wall on our bird to get the kill on the tank and also defend against an incoming backdoor. So we've seen one yam out the opponent, that means the next one is going to be disabled. They played a yam, leaf book, so one energy, got one energy back, but we got a steal. So they're at four here. Uh, now we cannot survive against the four card combo from that axi. Uh, so there is that to keep in mind that if they do have the four energy here, we, we're still going to go down. Uh, but we are able to pretty nicely get a kill on the tank. So this, these two cards, they'll bring them to last stand. So in the case that they do come through with the back door, four cards onto our bird, uh, our trump will hit their midliner, and then the follow-up leafwick series is just in case they don't backdoor. We again want to try and limit their energy if they defend their tank. Uh, all of these cards should be enough to get the kill. Uh, these two, as we said, will last stand it. If they play a pumpkin, the trump will last stand it. Uh, and if they play a pumpkin plus a serious, then the serious leafbug is going to finish them off. Okay, so they did get their four card combo there, and as we said, 
bring them to last stand and then the trump is going to come through on their mid. Now this still is not ideal, although we did get good value out of our bird before it died to the back door, which is generally what you want to do. Um, we aren't going to be able to um, effectively play around this 1v1 axie because as we said at the start, we're all melee and they've got an Indian start. So it might have to be a bit tricky here. Um, I think what we're mainly relying on is this watering can. So what we're going to do is we're not going to use the watering can here. We're just going to play these three attacks and hope, well not hope, but the thinking is that because we have a watering can and haven't showed a watering can yet, the opponent is going to try and wait till they've seen at least one of those. So we're going to hold on to our watering can and basically just force them to attack into it next turn if they do choose the pass. If they attack, of course, we're stuffed and we've messed up uh, and they have attacked. So ignore everything I just said, didn't pull off. Um, Again, this is this is one thing about the MMR being reset is I'm not entire. I haven't faced these players before. I'm also not sure um, what sort of skill level we're looking at. So that could have been an outplay that they made on us, recognizing our outplay, or it could have just been uh, that they didn't think of the watering can. Either way, worked out for them. Not good for us. Um, so there's three energy here. We know that they're probably going to try and use at least two attacks and maybe a bulwark as well. Uh, the question really is how many cards we use, and I think we just go with everything. Because if they do attack us, um, we know that they're going to be triggering our watering can because their damage moves are all uh, aqua. However, if they choose to pass, we're going to deal enough damage that with a four card combo, we should be able to get through and kill them in the following round. Um, and that is a double Indian start. So, shouldn't be able to get the kill on us here, uh, as we have played our... Hatsune and all this massive shield and although they played the double Indian star these two watering cans are ranged So we won't get any reflect damage from those. So that's a good round for us uh, They are again at three energy and hopefully now that our deck may have reset since we're in round six We'll see another rice. Unfortunately, we didn't see the rice uh, But we did get a pretty nice hand anyway. Uh, we can go with all these attacks Basically just trying to put them low enough so that in the following round we can and get through and get the kill. Uh, though we do have to be worried because we are 55 speed and so are they. So if we go with this play that I was I was looking to make and we go for this massive offense and they survive generate an energy they would be able to get the kill on us. Uh, so we're going with this but we are aware that it could backfire massively. Um, so they will survive and they will also save an energy so this is getting a bit scary here. Uh, though our hope is that we'll last stand and we'll manage to get our watering can off and just squeak out the kill. Okay. Looks like a lamb, not going to be enough without a crit. Oof. Just last stood there and we get the watering can and eke out the win. So that was a tight one there. We play, face the shrimp, which are, is pretty much our arch nemesis with these sort of birds. Uh, if you're not facing shrimp and you're not facing a backdoor bird, you tend to be in a good spot because you have such a rounded build that you can beat lots of 1v1 axes. Uh, but anyway, into the next one. Hopefully we'll face some more aquas to show off this trump here. We've got a tough matchup here against a double reptile. Uh, though, the things that we do have in our favour are the steel, which is very nice against uh, a tri-spikes build. And then the high damage coming through from our hair and our trumps. And hopefully what will happen is that we'll weaken this terminator before it gets to the 1v1. And then we'll be able to finish it off with a hair, uh, then a balloon at some point, and then two other attacks, and we'll be able to get through. Uh, though if we do get to the 1v1 without injuring this Terminator, they will be able to survive, and if they've got the double lag in your hand, slow us, and then kill us in the following round. Uh, interestingly, they've gone very aggressive here. Uh, on our order, we should have played the Hatsune first, because they have stunned, and then gone with a double leaf bug afterwards, so that's a small mistake there. Uh, but small mistakes do add up, and that might cost us later in the game. So... We've seen a lot of offense, so we ha don't have to worry about that. We also know they're at two energy, so of course, don't have to worry about tri spikes. Uh, most likely is that they defend their tank here. Unfortunately, they didn't play any tank cards last turn, so we won't have disabled their yam with that hat soon. So with that in mind, we're going to pass, worrying about the yam coming out the opponent. Okay, so they've gone with a thorny and then what looks like a pumpkin leaf bug. Uh, so they're going to be at three energy next turn. Still no yam, so we don't really want to attack with our bird. Uh, though if we do draw rice or something like that, we can go a bit aggressive here with this um, midliner. And we did manage to draw rice. We're going to go the rice, the goldfish, and the risky fish. We're going to hold on to our trumps to try and chain them later in the game. Uh, and also not attack with our bird cards, although we could get a kill because we don't want to risk the yam. Because if we are going into a 1v1 against the terminator and they're not weakened, uh, even if they do get double slow, if we have enough health, we can actually get through and win. 
So of course if we get Yamanos this early on, we're going to tick down, they're going to be able to eke out the win in the 1v1. Okay, so that's a single pumpkin out of the opponent, they were at 3 energy, so they played 1, we stole 1, they're going to be back at 3. Means we don't have to worry about that much damage coming through on us, but still, haven't seen any Yam. Uh, and that is a worrying sight. So here, we are going to play our Trump without a combo, and the main reason is because again, we don't want to play any bird cards into a Yam, and we have just seen both of their pumpkins as well. So we know that we're gonna be able to get the kill here. Uh, there's also a possibility that they play a double Yam. Players have made weirder plays, uh, so that's one thing that we're gonna watch out for. Worst case, really, is that they last stand, um, and they don't clear it with any of the moves, and then we can't follow up with our bird cards. But they have played two cards, so even if they last stand as they have done here, they'll clear it themselves. So it's a good spot for us. They've also spent two energy again, so they're sitting at three. Uh, if I were the opponent, probably would have held onto that Yam, because it didn't deal, didn't give them too much value there. And here in this position, uh, we could play the Rice. Really, it depends whether we're expecting a Tri Spikes Brick Call or attacks from the Terminator. But either way, I'm going to hold on to the Rice, uh, and then I'm going to play the two Trumps, because of course. We've already used one Trump out of the midliner, so unless our deck resets and we redraw a Trump, we're not going to see another Trump. So we're going to use that for the damage hair. With combo, it actually deals similar to what our hair does, and then we can hold on to the hair to use against the Terminator. We're ending off with a balloon just in case they go with the tri spikes, and we can fear it, and they'll be forced into our mid. Okay, and there's the tri spikes out of the opponent. Uh, again, not the end of the world, because what will happen is that next round, We'll be able to get the kill with one bird card and then follow up with aqua cards to get that weak contaminator that we were looking for by the time we get to the 1v1. Assume oh, so we got the crit there. Uh, as we were saying, we were really far ahead in this game anyway, and I think we would have pretty comfortably won. Um, there wasn't much the opponent could have done to outplay that. Maybe they could have brick their tank, but their midliner but as we said we would have split from both axes and we had five energy in the tank there so really not all that could have gone wrong even if we played four energy worth of cards and just wasted it into their midliner we still would have had that three card combo to take on the terminator um so unfortunately we did get a crit and couldn't show off the end game uh there but um what can you do crits crits happen more, more often than not they go against you uh, you get crit and it's unfortunate but here it was unfortunate because um we didn't get to show off our plays. But here, it was unfortunate because we uh, weren't able to play out the end game. And there's another crit as well uh, to get the kill on that snail shell. So that ends off the video. Hopefully that last game, that was spoiled a bit by the crit at the end, will show that that high damage onto that midliner with the trump is game changing as it allowed us to hold onto those hairs which we needed for the 1v1. That's one thing with trump with all this high damage, you can hold onto certain moves because of it. And in the game before, we showed that that extra little bit of shield can help you out as well. Now, this is by no means like an S tier card, maybe not even an A tier card, but it is a move that I think more people should be aware of and should consider building into their teams because it is just fundamentally strong. And as you saw, even if we aren't playing it in a combo, still 120 damage move, still solid when you get to the 1v1 with that bird. Um, so hopefully this was an entertaining video, maybe even helpful for some of you that are looking to test out a trump build uh, in your own games. Uh, but either way, I'm gonna round off the video here. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As always, if you've got any feedback or suggestions, drop it in the comments below. Have a good rest of your days. I'll see you in the next one.